Um, our next speaker is Alastair Kargen, and he is going to talk about tracking local storage configuration on Linux. Please welcome Alastair Kargen. Okay, I'll go fairly quickly um, because we're running behind. Right. So, straight, straight in. Um, so, um, is this? Yes, this is working. Right. <clears throat> so, c common problems. It's. Yeah, yeah. So, my system has got problem with its storage devices. Is this. So shout if it's not coming through. It doesn't sound right here. Um, my system's got some problem. It triggered thousands of log messages from different layers of the storage stack and applications on top. So we've got this problem on Linux that we get lots and lots of error messages from different layers, and they're all incompatible and very difficult to automatically process. Um, so the, the, the challenge is to recognize all the messages that we're getting and correlate them and try to work out what the original cause is that has triggered all these thousands of messages. Um, and in the storage area in particular, uh, we have a lot of problems. When we reboot, um, devices get different major and minor numbers, but it might be the same disk. So a disk might be having problems but in the log messages, it appears to be a different disk every time. It, after you've booted, you get different uh, numbers each time. And similarly, a lot of the information in uh, dev and sys is transient. Um, connected with that, uh, it can change, and we're not recording those changes properly. Uh, so we're not keeping records, and the basic challenge is, can we keep better records of what's happening in terms of storage? And having got those records, can we analyze things automatically any better? So the first thing we need is a persistent identifier for each device. Now, this was solved a few years back when UDEV came along and UDEV rules were being invented. Um, and you see in the dev disk directory lots of classifications by IDs, labels, paths, UUIDs. And if you go there, you can find your device um, and map it back to uh, the major minor number and anything else relating to it, even across boots and other, other changes on the system. We want to record this information somewhere persistent so that we can query it later. The system journal, uh, now part, part of system D, can store tr structured data in it as key value pairs. It's no longer just a, a single message string like the original syslog used to do. Um, our syslog can also store uh, key values, uh, but not to the same extent that system D, journal D can do. So having stored it, we, if we put it into the system journal, um, the journal CTL command is capable of filtering this um, by identifiers, but it's not a very sophisticated filter yet. It just does fixed string matches, um, at, at least wild cards and complicated patterns are beyond it at the moment. But once we've recorded all this information, going back to the time of the last boot, we can play back the changes and from that, reproduce the configuration like it was at an earlier time. So what I'm leading towards here is, if you're in a customer support situation, you can contact, you can get a copy of this from your customer and then replay the system to see what the storage was actually looking like at an earlier time, um, at, perhaps at the time that you're trying to focus on and when you think the problem happened. So storage logger is a very simple little package. Um, whenever the block device is added or removed, it creates a U event. This triggers what's called a UDEV rule processing, 
and this performs actions. It finds out the type of device, it probes it, finds out what might be on it. Is there a file system there? Do I need to mount it and so on? Creates the nodes and symbolic links that you see in dev. What Storage Logger is going to do is record the result of all that into the system journal. At the same time, it can grab some information out of Sys and attach it to that information. So at the moment, it is a bash script. The script runs as a last UDEV rule. Um, but in future, if it's successful, what it does can be folded back into those earlier UDEV rules and the remaining part could be built into UDEV itself, i.e. the capacity to actually log in the system journal. UDEV could do that itself if it was worth doing. Secondly, the replay part, what I've done there is written a wrapper around LSBLK. LSBLK is a very friendly tool that lets you see your stack of storage devices and find information out about them. So I've written a Perl wrapper around that. It takes time arguments, since and until, which happen to be the arguments that the uh, journal CTL uses play back the U events between those two times, create temporary dev and sys directories similar to the original ones, and then run ls block um, on those temporary directories instead of the real ones. Um, people have suggested other things we can do with this. We could take this sequence of U events that we've logged and the changes to dev and sys and do them as a series of git commits. So you can move forwards and backwards in time using Git. That's another idea that's been suggested and we may do. Finally, there's a tool called Skydive. There have been some talks earlier today about this. Primarily, this was invented for networking, but it can also do storage. Um, so the thing about Skydive is it gives you a GUI onto a graph database. So we can store the relationships between the devices in the graph database. We can also add in performance metrics, I.O. statistics, into that same database and then use the Skydive user interface um, to query that database and display it. So I'm now going to move on to um, the, some specifics. Journal CTL. Um, these are some of the parameters. All the messages I'm recording, I'm tagging them with that particular string, udevlog. So this is the parameter to journal CTL to select those messages. Um, I'm asking for out verbose output because I'm not actually logging any message string. I don't want any of this to appear in normal var log message files. It's just structured data. So I'm asking here for verbose output. I'm saying which fields I want, i.e. what keys persistent storage ID major and minor in my particular example and giving a range of times, 10 minutes when I might have been giving the talk um, if we were running to time. And finally, the persistent storage ID acts as the filter to say only show me the events where the persistent storage ID is device mapper, name, volume group one, logical volume naught. That output can then be put through into LSBLK. I put a J on the end because it's coming from the journal and it's also easy to type. Um, the until tells it when to stop. So if I actually run that for real, this is what I see. Um, so running that command on a, a virtual machine guest, so third line down, you can see I'm uh, Fedora KVM naught, guest 10 root, etc. And this is the actual output you get. The journal CTL log, date and timestamp, and then the parameters. It had minor naught, major 253, and these are the two strings it recorded as persistent IDs uh, from uh, UDEV. Um, so these are the things you normally want to filter on. So if I activated this device, deactivated it, did other things in between, the major and minor numbers could be changing, but if I filter it this way, I can see all the events relating to that device. And you can do the same thing with worldwide IDs, which is uh, really why this has been written. LSBLKJ looks just like LSBLKJ. 
be okay on the output. You can use all the standard command line arguments on it. The only bits missing are the file system information because we're not yet logging that, but in future we may be doing so. So I'll create a device called test one. Uh, obviously I'm recording the date here because I need that for my uh, parameters later. So I've created a very simple device mapper device called test one. It just returns IO errors and it's 50 sectors in size. That's all it's saying there. I decided to make it bigger. So again, using device mapper commands, um, I've increased its size there to 50,000 sectors resumed it to make it active and put the date on. So the thing to note that was between 12.42 and 35 seconds today and 12.42 and 56 seconds today. So the size of this device changed over time. So if I run my LS block J and I say until 12.42 and 30 seconds, I haven't created the device yet, so it doesn't appear at the bottom of the output. If I run it now at 12.40, 10 seconds later, it has arrived and it's 25K in size. And if I run it again um, now, it's gone up to just under 25 megs. So using that time, I was page backwards, you can see the bottom line changes and it's that until parameter that's controlling um, what I'm seeing there. So this is just one application using the logs, um, but it makes it very easy to see. So I now have a demo. If the video plays, we will see if it works on here. Yep. So this is the old interface for Skydive. There is a newer interface which displays um, the devices a different way. Is that going to play? Yes. Is it? Yes. Um, I'm afraid I'm not sure how to hide that bottom bit. Um, so this is showing all the devices on the system. Um, uh, you can see disks, network devices, and so forth um, in a GUI. And you can use the GUI to select some of those items and view their properties. So up here, we've got a mirror device, a volume group, LVM volume group that's a mirror. And on the right-hand side there, we see a window just appeared with the metadata. Um, that's relating to some of those devices. So over here, we've got an R image device forming part of it, mirror at LV. So if we just click on any of the devices, we can see the attributes of that device. And if we scroll down there, we can see the sector size, owner, request size, and so forth, that it's active and so on. Um, and then underneath, we've also been recording some metric information, the average queue size, read size, write size, um, and so forth. So we're storing that in their time sequence data as well. Um, and then down at the bottom here, we've just got a summary of total metrics on that device, reads per second and so on, just displayed in a slightly different way, basically the same data as above. So next up here, we've, in Skydive, we have the ability to run queries against the graph database. So first of all, in the highlight box, we want it to highlight any device that meet, matches this particular expression. And you can see there, five devices have just been highlighted after we cut and pasted in an expression. That's a query, a bit like SQL, but it's a graphical query language, Gremlin. And I've highlighted anything where the reads per second is greater than 30. Um, and it's matched those five devices, so it's highlighted them. If we go to the filter box, we can put that same expression in there. And instead of highlighting, it will remove everything else. It will just show the items that match that expression. So when we do that, we find we're just left with those five devices that have more than 30 uh, reads per second. Um, so finally, up here, there's also on the Gremlin console, you can write your own queries in here directly and see the results in JSON underneath. Um, so that is that same query, and that's the JSON data that's come back from the database, which Skydive has now displayed 
Um, and then the final thing, if we add one more piece onto the end of that query, um, we scroll back up there. Here we are. Of count, this dot count, that will tell us how many. And it's come back and said five. There were five matches. There were five devices. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish there. Um, if I flick back to the final slide, yep. Uh, those are some links to the package. It's sitting on GitHub. There are packages built already for Fedora uh, using the copper facility, so you can try them out. I'm looking for feedback um, and to determine whether to take this further or not, um, whether it's useful for people. So uh, I'll end it there. Thank you.